Welcome back to the AB Scale Project. I'm Krieger, and this is Alpha Bravo. He's in a different mode today because we're going to go into the combiner conflict. I'm not going to say wars because I don't need any copyright problems. Anyway, since Devastator came onto the scene back in 1985, Transformers has been rife with more and more combining robots. It blew up with the Scramble City combiners like Superion, Minasaur, etc., and still peripherates today to new combiners like Victorion and Skyrain. I realize I've already tipped my hand by having the mascot of this channel be from Combiner Wars, but let's look at the reasons why we wind up there. First, scale. From what we've learned in previous episodes, we know that combiners should be huge. Here's a scale chart comparison between Devastator and Star Saber. We know that Star Saber should be around Siege Jetfire size for the current War for Cybertron scale. So here's Siege Jetfire next to the Combiner Wars Devastator and Superion. We see Devi is about 3 inches too tall and Superion is about 3 inches too short. Also, when we look at the scale chart between Megatron and Scrapper, and compare the Siege Megs with Combiner Wars Scrapper and Alpha Bravo, we see that Scrapper is way too big, but Alpha Bravo is close enough. Overall, for scale, minus the Titan class, the Combiner Wars individuals work well, but the Combiners fall a little short. There is one saving grace that we got from the IDW comics, which is Combiners can mass shift. We saw Superion doing it when he was absorbing part of the Enigma of Combination. So we have validation for the Combiner Wars Combiner size. Second, price. If you want to pursue the taller Combiners, besides Titans Class Devastator and Predaking, you'll have to go to third party and knockoffs. The knockoffs can be cheaper and some like CBB are decent quality, but difficult to get shipped from China currently. The third parties are expensive and the quality varies across the board. So for the best balance of price, availability, and quality, Combiner Wars and Power of the Primes was the best route to go. They may not be now that they're all aftermarket, but at the time, it was the best. Third, character selection. If you want a variety of combiners outside of Devastator, Predator King, and the Scramble City combiners, you've got to go to the Combiner Wars scale. It's the only place you'll find Victorion, Sky Rain, etc. Granted, they were all invented by Hasbro in the Combiner Wars line, and it's pretty self-serving to put them in the co comics to plug them, but the fact still remains that Combiner Wars is the only place to get them. So for the Scramble City Combiners like Superion here, Combiner Wars and the Power of the Primes are the winners. You can get KOs of these pretty cheap off of places like Sir Toys if you can't find them on the secondary market. I've also seen some of the Night Warriors versions coming back into retailers like Big Bad Toy Store and TF Source. I do recommend kits like the Perfect Effect kits I have on Superion here, to help fix the feet problem, the hands, and also make it look more G1 like the head and chest kit here. Combiner Wars, Power of the Primes, Unite Warriors do cover most of the combiners we need, but there are still a few holes that need to be filled. First up is the first among combiners, Devastator. He started life in the Diaclone line and premiered in the second season of the original series. As you can see by the toys here, he's been the go-to combiner for many series. For playability, We'll remove the G1 and the Action Master. For G1 IDW appearance, we'll remove the movies, the Energon, and the RID 2001. We're down to the Combiner Wars, but we already know that the scale is wrong. So we need to delve into the third parties in KO. Every third party in KO company has made one, but only three are close to Combiner Wars scale and are decent quality. The Make Toys, the CBB, and TFC. I have the Make Toys Quantron here, and you can see that it scales well with Combiner Wars, and their Green Giant is the same size. So looking between him and TFC, the TFC at the time was $100 more. Even though I'm not a huge fan of Quantron, because most of the component figures are not fun to transform, it's a no-brainer for the price. So I bought... the TFC. TFC Hercules is a little taller, but is close enough to be acceptable. So why did I buy it when I'm such a cheapskate? When I went to commit to purchase, TF Source had a sale on both Make Toys and TFC for the same price. Not being a fan of Quantron and seeing the reviews on TFC, price being equal, I bought the TFC. Why did I not consider the CBB? It didn't exist at the time. By the time it came out, I had the TFC and I was happy with my Devastator choice. Also, the TFC had one important element to make him the most IDW of all the choices. He has the forearm treads. So the winner is TFC. He's difficult to get now, but he's fun set and is very intuitive to transform. There is a kit to make it more G1, but I like leaving him stock since it's the closest to the IDW appearance. Next up is Predaking. 
We're just looking at the combiner here, not the prime character. He came onto the scene in the third season of the original series to be an opponent to Skylinks. For the toys, we can see we only have two official choices, the Titan class and the G1. The Titan class, while awesome, is too tall, and the G1 is too small and has next to no articulation, so they're out. Like Devastator, every other non-official company has made one. Delving into all of them, the best one for the scale is... Mastermind Creations Feral Rex. Or in my case, the KO of the Feral Rex, because I'm cheap. He's a placeholder until I'm in a place where I can get the Feral Rex, or something better comes along. I don't recommend the KO for a permanent solution. I had to do a lot of sanding to get him to combine. The diaper doesn't like to stay on, and he has a hard time standing on his own. For our fright, we have Monstructor. This guy started off as a pretender combiner in 1989 that left a lot to be desired, like height and structural integrity with all the gold plastic. As a character, he wasn't used until IDW picked him up and ran with him as the first combiner that was driven mad by the combination process. G1 is our only official choice. Good luck collecting him and getting him to stay in one piece, but luckily Fans Project came to the rescue. The Fans Project Beast Tractor is an awesome representation of the character and is excellent for the scale. We've already called the recolor of this mold for Dino King in another episode, so it's not a big surprise, but it is a great toy. Finally, Leo Kaiser first appeared in the Japanese Victory cartoon and later showed up in the Matum T Lost Light comics as part of Death Source's crew. We do have the Combiner Wars version here, but it's missing three members of the Breast Force, Leo Zack, Jaguar, and Death Cobra. Botcon Leo Zack makes a good stand-in for him. Another option that I'm going to do eventually is, is make a custom out of the Power of the Prime Starscream and replace the Death Saurus in the official combiner. For Jaguar, I made a custom from Combiner Wars Swindle and a head from Shapeways. You can do the same for Death Cobra with the Alpha Bravo mold. For the other three member plus combiners, some of the original toys are the only choice like Rail Racer, Land Cross, Land Fill, Six Train, and the other MicroMaster combiners. Road Caesar did get the third party treatment with the TFC Trinity Force. The component bots are out of scale, but the combiner does match the combiner's war scale. Raiden currently only has G1, but there are third party options in the works by Moon Studio and Zeta Toys. There's also rumors of a Masterpiece Raiden. I'm willing to bet by the Moon Studio pre-order price and the Masterpiece name that both of those will be out of scale. The Zeta Toys, I have no real indication of scale, but by their other offerings, I think it will be too tall as well. So to recap, get the Combiner Wars scale for the most variety, but you have to go KO and third party to get the right scale. For the price versus scale, the Combiner Wars scale wins. Thanks for joining us today on the AB Scale Project. If there's a character you'd like to see, put your request in the comments below. Please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see y'all later.